Explaining GTA Characters Backstories, Trevor Phillips Edition. What is known about Trevor's background comes from his own words. Trevor was born and raised in Canada, near the border with the United States, or as he calls it, the Canadian border region of America. In a conversation with Franklin while hanging out, he claims he grew up in five states, two countries, 14 different homes, eight fathers, three care homes, two correctional facilities, one beautiful damaged flower of a mother, and has served time, my country, your country, and myself. Even as a child, he had a history of rage issues and violent impulses that ruined his attempts to fit into society. Notably, it is implied that he, in a fit of rage, sodomized his hockey coach with a hockey stick, and he implies in a conversation with Cletus that at some point he strangled a clarinet player with his own instrument. Trevor also mentions how he killed various animals and drifters, even during the early years of his life. Trevor's childhood itself was an unhappy one. His father was physically abusive towards him, as stated in Hang 10, while his mother was emotionally abusive, overbearing, treated him with condescension and saw him as a useless boy who cared little about his mother. When he was a child, Trevor's father abandoned him in a shopping mall, which Trevor later burned down in retaliation. Trevor also had a brother named Ryan, whom Trevor was not fond of. Ryan died in an accident prior to 2013. Trevor dropped out of school, which is the possible reason why he has a lack of some basic knowledge, such as the location of ancient Rome, which he thought was a part of America. He also reveals that he has problems with grammar and improvises when it comes to punctuation. It is possible that he had some formal education, as he mentions during police chases that he took a night class in criminal law. However, this could be sarcasm. Trevor has good mathematical skills, being able to accurately calculate the price of four tons of gold in a matter of seconds. When playing golf, Trevor says that he was the Canadian under-18 champion and almost turned pro. Later in his life, Trevor discovered that he had a talent for flying jets. He enlisted in the Air Force to fly fighter jets, but several days prior to completing his training and becoming a licensed pilot, Trevor was deemed mentally unstable by the witch in charge of psychological evaluations, thus resulting in Trevor's discharge and grounding for life. It was implied his discharge was due to his psychological relationship with his mother. After being discharged from the military, Trevor became a drifter and committed petty crimes along the border with no particular goal in mind. He never committed any serious crimes until he met Michael Townley around age 20, circa late 1980s, escorting cargo across the border. He was waiting on the runway to meet his employer and saw not one but two dust trails coming up the road, despite the fact that he was told there would be only one person meeting them, though he admitted that he didn't know enough about the cargo business at the time to check references. Michael exited the first car while a man whom Michael previously carjacked exited the other, yelling at them. Trevor shot off a flare gun he was carrying into the second man's eye, killing him. He and Michael both dumped the body into a lake afterwards. The flare was still burning from the inside of his head as they dropped him off, causing the pair to throw up. After the incident, Trevor and Michael became friends and started a criminal partnership together. Trevor's first job involved robbing a place that cashed checks. However, he was caught because the clerk turned out to be someone who knew him, resulting in him serving four months of a six-month sentence. After Trevor was released, he and Michael committed many robberies all over the Midwest, though Michael's recognizable quoting of lines from Solomon Richards' movies, and Trevor's habit to snap and murder people in broad daylight often kept them on the run. Over time, Michael developed a relationship with and married a stripper named Amanda, eventually having two kids, Tracy and Jimmy. This created some friction between the criminal pair due to Michael spending more and more time with his new family and less with his criminal activities. Despite this, Trevor began to see himself as an uncle to the couple's children, even vowing to avenge Tracy should anyone wrong her. Over the following years, Michael became more cautious as a criminal because he saw himself having more to lose should he be imprisoned or killed, which led Trevor to believe Michael was going soft. Sometime later, Trevor met Brad Snyder, who would often join Trevor and Michael and commit robberies together, along with a contact named Lester Crest and a few other associates. Michael and Brad did not trust or like each other, but Trevor got along with Brad to a certain degree. 
Trevor told Brad about his beliefs of Michael going soft, to which Brad suggested that they cut off Michael and work only with each other. Trevor declined, believing he should stay loyal to Michael. Trevor and Michael remained partners in crime until they undertook an ill-fated heist in 2004 alongside Brad and an unnamed getaway driver in Ludendorff, North Yankton. Secretly, Michael made an agreement with corrupt FIB agent Dave Norton to exit his life of crime and start over with his family in Los Santos. The plan involved the group robbing a cash depot, followed by them making their way to a rendezvous point where Dave would shoot Trevor and pretend to shoot Michael, who would then pretend to be buried at the Ludendorff Cemetery before actually moving to Los Santos with his family. The heist initially ran relatively smoothly until Trevor killed a security guard holding Michael at gunpoint, the arrival of the police which the group had to fight through, barely managing to get to their getaway car. As they drove to the rendezvous point, where they were told a helicopter was waiting for them, their driver was killed by the police and Michael was forced to take the wheel. Their plan was scuppered after their vehicle was struck by an oncoming train at a railroad crossing and destroyed. Michael insisted that they stick to the plan, and they began walking in search of the helicopter. They were then ambushed by Dave Norton, who fired at the trio, missing Trevor and fatally wounding Brad instead, before shooting again and injuring Michael. Trevor refused to leave his friends behind and attempted to fight off the police until a weary Michael told him to save himself, and Trevor reluctantly made his escape. As a result of the failed heist, both Trevor and Michael wrongly believed one another to be dead. Trevor was not able to get access to his savings because of his identity being blown, but regardless managed to evade the police for several years and made a new life for himself in the rural town of Sandy Shores, San Andreas. There, he developed an addiction to crystal meth and founded a small criminal business empire with newfound partners Ron Jakowski, a paranoiac conspiracy theorist, Wade Hebert, an inexperienced wanderer, and Chef, a meth cook. The business, named Trevor Phillips Enterprises, specialized in arms smuggling and the cooking and sales of crystal methamphetamine. During Trevor's time in Sandy Shores, he affiliated himself with the Aztecas gang, the redneck Hillbilly O'Neill brothers and high-ranked members of the Lost MC, including the club's leader, Johnny Clements. However, their relationship was particularly strained due to Trevor's tendency to occasionally have sex with Johnny's girlfriend, Ashley Butler, much to Johnny's chagrin.